Four ways. Four ways. Yeah, because there's one, two in each suit, so that's four. And we calculate four out of 52. How much is four out of 52? Point Point zero seven. How much is that as a percent? Yeah. Is that good or bad? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's subjective, right? Yeah, I mean, for, for you, that might be a low, that's yeah, a fairly low probability of getting a two randomly of, out of 52 cards. Not like 50%. It's not certainly not 73% like Peyton Manning throwing the football. It's like a sure thing. But um, random deck of cards, you're selecting a two. Now, is this subjective probability? Are we just guessing here? So it's definitely not that. Is it observed probability or is it classical? What do you think? Why isn't it observed? We can actually go through the motion of taking the cards out and saying, oh, we got a two, put it aside, and then, oh, we'll keep going, oh, we got another two. Right, you didn't. You, you, you didn't do that at all. It's not like Peyton Manning, right? He actually threw the ball, and you calculated that. You didn't say, oh, I drew a card out and put it back um, 83 times. And out of those 83 times, 21 of them were twos, or something like that, or five of them were twos. You didn't actually do a procedure here. You just calculated the what should happen in your procedure. Do you see the difference here between the Peyton Manning example where he actually did something and this example? Now, could you turn a card example into an actual observed probability? Answer, sure you could if you just took the deck cards and did it. You know, so if I gave the, this on a test and said, okay, a person drew out five cards with replacement from a deck of cards. He got one, two, um, a jack, a king, another two, and an ace. What's the probability that, they're gonna, that you are going to pull out a two from this deck of cards? You'd have, you had two twos that pulled out out of 52 cards. That would be your, or, I'm sorry, out of five tries. So that would be your probability is the two out of five. So it would be how much you got out of how many cards you drew. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so that's, that's the difference here. You can talk about the same question. It just depends on how this was actually accomplished, whether they did the procedure or whether they're talking about the theory of it. So this for sure for us, this is going to be classical. You know, a while back, someone did a poll on cloning, back when uh, stem cell research was just kind of coming out. This was a few years ago. And stem cells, people thought they were going to be using those for cloning. And so they did this, this poll on whether people thought cloning, sorry, cloning people was good or bad. So here's the results of that. <clears throat> so when they did this poll, 91% I'm sorry, not 91%. 91 people said cloning was a really good idea because they wanted this extra person. Have you seen the, have you seen the movie The Island? Great movie. All, all kind of about the, the cloning idea. Um, oh, I don't want to ruin it for you. It's about, on, I just ruined it for you. Uh, 91 people said cloning was a really good thing. good. <laughs> 901 people said, you know what, I'm not really so sure about this cloning thing. Say cloning back. The rest of the people had no opinion. And because you're always going to get some no opinions in a group. Like, you know what? I really don't care. I just want to play my video games. Leave me alone. So 20 people no, maybe they just didn't know. They, they really don't have the information. They haven't really thought about that. They didn't have any opinion. If this was a random poll, this should give us some indication about the general public, whether 
you can go outside right now and ask somebody about cloning, whether they think it's a good or a bad idea. This was collected randomly in the methods that we've used earlier in this class. Remember talking about those, like the systematic sampling, or the stratified, or the cluster sampling, all that good stuff. So let's pretend this was done that way. Maybe it was. I really don't, I don't remember where this came from. But let's say it was. It should give us some indication about everyday people. So let's go ahead and find the probability that we can go outside right now and randomly select a person who thinks cloning is a good idea. So what we want to find, and we're going to use appropriate symbols here, we want to find a probability that someone thinks cloning's good. How in the world are we going to figure this out? How in the world? Firstly, before we talk about that, can we determine whether this is um, classical or observed or subjective? Is it subjective? Is it subjective? Now it's based on some data here. So is this going to be classical or is this going to be observed? What do you think? Observed. Yeah. It's based on some something that actually happened, right? Some people went out there and collected data. Polls. Hopefully listen to this. Polls. Poll, not. Polls. <laughs> polls. Like what do you think? Polls are always observed because you're always collecting data, right? You're always talking to somebody. That's that's observed. You're observing what they're they're doing. Um, it's not classical, it's not based on theory, it's what actually you collected. So a poll is definitely always going to be observed. So I'll write that down. This is certainly observed probability. Hopefully the difference between observed and classical is becoming really clear to you. I hope that's happening. Now, how do we calculate observed probability? Well, it's certainly still division because that's how our probabilities are calculated. We calculate the number of people or number of things that accomplish our event divided by the number of times our procedure was repeated. So, number of times that we accomplished our event, which was cloning was good. How many is that? How much? Say it louder. 91, very good. Cloning good, cloning good, 91 people. 91 people. Out of how many people? What do we have to do to find how many people? Is it out of 91? Is it out of 901? Add them up? Add up these two? Good, because even the no opinion people, they still took that poll, right? They just didn't categorize themselves. So we add all that up. What now? Like that? Sweet. That's how many people were involved in this poll, in this procedure. So we calculate 91 divided by our 1,012, and to the third decimal place, we get what? Is it point zero? Eight nine nine. Good. The nine moves that nine up to a ten, but it, okay, good. So basically, nine percent. So right now, going out there is what this suggests: is that randomly picking out a person, you should have a nine percent probability of getting someone who thinks uh, cloning is a good thing. So maybe that's higher now. Who who really knows? But this is a this is an old poll. But that's how you would calculate. Uh, such things. Which makes you feel good about what we've talked about so far today. Good, that's fantastic. Are there any questions before we get going? I'm going to have to race this side here. You all kind of understand the whole Peyton Manning thing that's observed because he actually did the passes. The deck of cards, we're not really drawing cards, we're just kind of thinking about what should happen here. That's our classical. We have another observed, anytime you get a poll, man, if they're doing the research, that's definitely observed. They're, they're taking that information in.
there you go. Find the <laughs> find the probability a bird will poop on your car today. If you wash your car, it always happens. So right out there, right out in the freaking goodness, darn birds. I wish I had a BB gun. Every bird. Anyway. So find the probability a bird's going to poop on your car today. Um, is that going to be a classical probability we're going to find? It? What do you think? Is there a way to tell how many ways this event can happen? How many ways can this bird poop on your car? I don't know. It could be flying. It could like land in the car. Get hit the windshield. And go. Oh crap! Get hit. <laughs> okay. Is it observed? I mean, y you could. You could talk about observed, right? If you had calculated how many times birds have pooped on your car over the past whatever amount of days divided by the number of days, you have a probability there. That would work. Have we done that? So it's definitely not classical. That's impossible because you don't have an equal chance of the bird pooping on your car every single day. That doesn't happen. Um, but when it's in the garage and a bird poops on there, I mean, that, you're really unlucky. That's actually crazy. It's happened to me before, actually. The bird was in my garage. Speaking of bird. Uh, it's on a dairy. Anyway, uh, it's, it's definitely not observed because we haven't really calculated this. So the probability of a bird pooping in a car is, what is it for you? Heather, go ahead. Subjective. It is subjective, but I mean, what's your probability oh. for, for your car today? Would you say like 10%, 20%? Sure. Sure. Good, that, good thing I just put words in your mouth. Okay, how about <laughs> over here? What's the probability, Karina, someone's going to, not someone. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really bad. That would be really unlucky. That some, some bird's going to on your car. What would you think? See, for me, it'd be like 50%. My car always gets pooped on. That's another thing about subjective, right? It can change person to person. Um, so if you can think of the probability and you say, well, for me, that's 20%. Maybe your car never gets pooped on. It's like 5%. For me, it's like 50 to 70%. It always gets some I park under trees. So I mean, duh. It's going to happen. But subjective probabilities can do that, right? They can change. Can classical and observed change? No, this is based on hard evidence. Um, this one was based on complete theory, which is, is not going to change, okay? So that's another way to kind of view this as well. So find the probability this, is, this stupid bird's going to take a dump in your car. Uh, it said, depends on who you are, but this is certainly going to be subjective. And it probably depends on where you park. If you're parking by the beach and there's lots of seagulls, then yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and do one more. I'll give you a couple, uh, couple notes that are important for us, and then we'll continue to talk about some complementary events and what that even means. Let's find the probability that if a couple has three kids, two of them are going to be boys.